This happened to me several years ago when I was in college. It was just after finals and winter break was starting, so they gave us a little under a week to get our stuff together and leave for the month. I'm not sure if all colleges did this, but ours didn't allow students to stay in the dorms during large breaks, like winter and summer. Anyway, my parents were supposed to come on the very last day possible. I didn't have much to pack, so I just waited. During these days though, I said bye to all my friends and the whole building was pretty much emptied immediately. It was winter break after all, so everyone was eager to leave. My parents were driving though, and they had busy lives, so that's just how it was for me. I honestly didn't mind the quiet though, but it was the night before my parents were going to arrive, and basically no students were here anymore. Around 10 o'clock, I got ready for bed and turned off the lights in my room. I don't think it was even 5 minutes later when a knock came from my door. I jumped, as it kind of freaked me out. I had no idea who could possibly be at my door given all the people I knew had already left. Not to mention, it was 10pm. Regardless, I got up and went over to the door. When I opened it, I was surprised to see a large, young man standing there, bundled up in a winter jacket. He looked like a student though. Can I help you with something? I asked. He asked me if I'd seen a guy here. He didn't give me a name, but rather just described his features. Before answering, I asked why. I had no idea who I was talking to or why he was at my door, so I wanted some answers first. He stumbled out a few words before settling on saying that he was his roommate and he wasn't sure where he went. But if he was his roommate, then why didn't he just give me a name? It all seemed really weird. I wasn't sure how to respond and stood there for a moment, thinking of what to do, before he interrupted my thoughts and asked me something really bizarre. Can I check if he's in your room? I immediately said no and began shutting the door. The guy stopped me though, putting his hand on the other side. He wasn't trying to push it open, but he was pushing hard enough to keep me from closing it. I told him to back off as sternly as I could, but he again asked me to check my room. I didn't know what the fuck was going on, but I knew I needed to find a way out of this quick before it escalated to something a lot worse. I only had a few seconds to think and I realized in those moments that I'd already messed up by opening the door in the first place. I guess spending so much time living in a dorm, I never had a reason to fear opening my door. I backed up, letting the guy open it fully. He smiled. I gestured with my hand, allowing him to come inside. I barely had anything in here, nothing worth stealing if that's what he was after, so I hoped this would get him to be in and out quickly. As soon as he took a few steps and passed me in the room, I walked out the door and into the hallway. He turned and looked at me, as if I had offended him by walking out. I just didn't want to be trapped in a small room with this random big dude. He glanced around my room for a few seconds, then he came back into the hallway, and without saying another word, he left. I had no clue what just happened but the more thought I gave it, the crazier it seemed. Thinking about his appearance, I knew it was snowing, so it wasn't odd that he was wearing thick winter clothing, but what was odd was that he seemed to have just come from outside. His jacket had water droplets from recently melted snow, and his nose was red like he'd been out in the cold, snowy night for a while. I just didn't understand what random student would go straight from outside to my dorm room on the third floor and knock on my door at 10 p.m. Why was he even asking me? How did he know I was here? There's a hundred rooms in this building, and he happened to knock on mine. Nothing made sense at all, and it kept me up all night. I even moved my small dresser in front of my door, just in case. Before my parents picked me up on the following day, I decided to walk over to the police department across the street. When I told them what happened, they seemed to be a lot more interested than I had expected. I answered a ton of questions until finally they told me what was going on after ruling me out from being a suspect. A kid on the floor below mine was missing yesterday morning when his parents came to pick him up. He had no roommate and with the building so empty it made the case a lot more difficult. Obviously, 
Hearing about the guy at my dorm last night, they were thinking it may be a good lead. But days turned to weeks, and then months. I don't know what happened, as it's been many years. I think back about how that guy at my room knew that someone was missing, and said it was his roommate, but obviously he was lying. I don't think he ever turned up either. I also think about why he came to my room specifically, and if he planned to make me go missing as well. He also could have just been some random guy looking for his friend, but that seems unlikely due to all the coincidences. There's so much I don't know, and unfortunately, will probably never know. I live in the Western Territory of Wyoming. Most of Wyoming is made up of small towns and long roads going between them. I live in one of these towns, consisting of maybe 40 to 50 buildings total and barely the area of a square mile. The next nearest town is an hour drive away. Anyway, my cottage type home is down a trail away from the center of town. I live alone with my dog Sam, but I find it peaceful, at least for right now. I never found that I had to worry about anything, being so far away from civilization. But one night, I realized that that was exactly why I should be worried. I worked from home, so just like any other day, I worked until 5 and then got off and took my dog for a long walk. We would often go through a trail I made in the forest behind our house. It was the middle of winter though, so it was fairly cold and there was a light snowfall. I walked Sam for maybe 20 minutes before the sun began setting and I decided it best to turn around and head back to the house. Along our walk back, Sam perked his head up and stopped suddenly, staring ahead. It was somewhat dark at this point, but I could still see clear enough that nothing was there. I kept walking forward and Sam eventually followed. But a few steps later, I noticed something on the path. I got closer. There were footprints in the thin layer of snow. While it was already odd for there to be footprints on a self-made trail next to my isolated home, what was more odd was the direction in which they were going. They went across the trail, not along it, and based on the angle, they were going straight through the trees in the direction of my house. I would have noticed them on our way up the path, so they had to be recent, within the last 10 minutes for sure. I tugged Sam along, walking quickly on the trail as the snow began to pick up. When we exited the tree line, it was too dark and snowy to even see the house clearly. Getting closer though, a really bad, unnerving feeling came across me. I felt safer with Sam next to me, but something just didn't feel right. I went up to the front door and opened it. Sam seemed to be acting normal, so I felt a bit of relief. I took his collar and leash off, but after a few minutes, I couldn't shake the thought of those footprints in the snow. I decided I needed peace of mind and grabbed my coat to go check and make sure that no footprints were around the house. It was really dark and the snow was heavy now. I walked around the side and started looking for any signs of anything, but with so much snow I was sure it would be covered up by now. Still, I just wanted to make sure. I was on the left side of my house, seeing nothing at all, when Sam suddenly started barking from inside. It startled me, but I immediately ran back around to the front and went inside. I called out for Sam, running through the living room and over to the back door where I saw him standing. His tail was between his legs and he was staring at the back door intensely. I hurried over to him, his gaze not even shifting from the door. My adrenaline was rushing through me by now, getting really scared. Looking over at the back door more closely. My heart stopped when I saw water on the floor inside the house right by the doormat. I switched on the backyard light, seeing footprints going right up to the door, then back out and around the side of the house. I was really scared and quickly ran to grab my hunting rifle from the other room. I know it's not the most practical self-defense weapon, but it was intimidating at least. I felt trapped and at a disadvantage, unknowing of who this person was where they were or what they wanted. But seeing as they tried entering my house, they were willing to risk their life for whatever it was they were after. The footprints went off to the right side of the house though, so I ran over to that area of the home and turned on the lights, then opened the blinds on the window. 
Just as I opened the blinds, I heard loud, heavy footsteps running away from the window. Sam began barking again, and I tried to look out, but I couldn't see anything through the snow. I stayed on high alert for hours, unsure of what exactly to do. Police in this area weren't exactly able to provide as much service as they may do in more populated areas, so I really was on my own for the most part. Thankfully, that seemed to be the end of it though. I notified the police of the incident the next morning, but I never found any answers. I don't know who it was or what they were trying to do. It was extremely creepy though, and made me a bit more uncomfortable with living so far from others. But luckily I still have Sam with me, because without him scaring the intruder away, I don't know if I'd be here right now. I drive for a local grocery chain in my area. It's not a full-size semi-truck, it's more of a large van, but I usually have an 8-10 to 10 hour route that goes between 3-4 to four stores. It's a pretty simple job that pays nice enough and gives me little to no stress. The only time things do get stressful is in winter. The van struggles in the snowy conditions and with thousands of dollars worth of cargo in the back, it puts a bit of stress on me. This winter had been worse than most, with more snowfall, ice, and foggy conditions. On this particular day, I had to stop at four stores. It was snowing a decent amount, but the plows were keeping up with the roads so there wasn't too many issues. By the time I finished unloading the last of the cargo at the fourth store, it was 8 o'clock and the snow had started piling up a bit more on the road. Dark, snowy, and unplowed roads are never a good combo when driving. One thing to mention as well is that large trucks and vans have an easier time managing the snow when they are heavier, giving them more traction. So, with no more cargo in the back of my van, I had to drive extra carefully since the back wheels were lighter and could slide out easily. The start of the drive back went well, but the further out I got towards the warehouse, the less plowed the roads were. There was a long stretch of road that leads directly to the warehouse, and I was worried that it may not be plowed at all given the state of the main roads. This wasn't a main entrance to the warehouse lot either but it was a less busy side route that a lot of us drivers use frequently when coming in from the south as it saves nearly 5 minutes of driving. Turning onto this road though, I was surprised to see it was actually plowed recently, barely any snow on it at all. This was rare because this road only leads to warehouse buildings so it wasn't seen as a priority for plowing companies. Thankful for this, I rolled down the road at a steady pace. I don't remember what I was thinking about probably just my plans for the rest of the night after I got off, when out of nowhere, the road ahead was packed full of snow. I slammed on my brakes, and luckily I was able to stop just before I hit the snow, but it definitely got me awake and a bit dazed. I looked up, and in the headlights was a completely unplowed road for the rest of the way up to the warehouse. I'd never seen a road only plowed halfway, with such a sudden stop. There wasn't even anywhere to turn around, so they must have just plowed all the way up here and then backed all the way out. I couldn't believe it. After a minute, I was getting a bit angry actually. Who would do something like this? I left my van on, but got out and looked at the road. It was really cold and snowy, but I could see clear tracks from multiple vehicles. I turned and looked down the road where I came, and not far from the back of my van, I saw something on the ground. I walked over and got a closer look. On the road was a bunch of equipment, like parts to something. I didn't know what they were, but they looked expensive and definitely didn't belong on the road. It seemed like they'd fallen out of a truck that was heading to the warehouse. I got back inside my van and started backing out. At the time, I was telling myself that I was just being dramatic, but I couldn't help but feel like I was in the middle of some weird crime scene. When I made it off the road, I pulled around and drove the extra minutes around to the front of the warehouse and took the main entrance. As I was pulling up though, my work phone started buzzing. The night manager at the warehouse was calling me, which was extremely rare. I picked up and they immediately asked if I was okay then told me to take the main entrance and not the back route. I just said okay, since I was already at the warehouse, 
but then I went inside to talk to him and figure out what was going on. Apparently, he had just gotten word in from a neighboring warehouse that one of their drivers got jumped and robbed on the back road. He said the police were already on their way as well. Hearing that, everything made sense in my head and I fell silent for a second, then told him what happened to me. It didn't take long for the guys to get caught though, because the expensive equipment they stole turned out to be highly secured and had internal trackers. It was a group of young men who admitted to making the road into a trap where they would follow a truck once they turned in and then block their only exit once they reached the dead end. Then, of course they'd rob the cargo and hold the driver at gunpoint while they did it. I was creeped out for a while, unsure of what to think. I'd never had something like that happen to me before, so it's strange for me to think that if I'd arrived only a few minutes earlier, I would have been caught in a trap and had a gun to my head.